this is Katie. In today's video, the lighting is really, really bad. <laughs> I hope that I can change it in like the editing. I'm doing my makeup today on camera, so hopefully we can change the lighting. Otherwise, it's just gonna be a trash video. So today, I decided that I wanna do my makeup on camera and talk to you guys. I've had quite a few people ask more um, like specifics about my makeup routine uh, or how I apply my makeup or what makeup I use. And so you guys know I don't do makeup videos very often. Every few months I like to do one. So today, makeup video. And I decided that I'm gonna use all my like most expensive, fanciest makeup because most of us are stuck inside all day and for some people they feel good staying in pajamas all day not putting makeup on uh, not doing their hair stuff like that but some people depending on your personality and what your routine maybe used to be before we started social distancing maybe putting on makeup and getting ready will still help you be more motivated to do your job from home or just kind of honestly make you feel a little bit better and that might mean even using your super expensive makeup every once in a while even though you're not going to really see anyone and you're gonna be home all day but yeah I just figured it would be fun to play with all the expensive stuff because I have a lot of makeup from Sephora and Ulta but also from Target and some from even TJ Maxx some of my expensive stuff I actually got at TJ Maxx super discounted price and then some from CVS and stuff it's all over the place uh, most of it is from Sephora but definitely a wide variety I almost hit myself in the face and then even from Sephora some of it's a little bit more expensive than other things that I have and so figured that it would be fun to put on a very expensive face of makeup for no reason with my $8 <laughs> Target tank top. But even getting dressed, like I know there's been like jokes going around Instagram, like if you're putting on jeans while you're at home, what are you proving? But I mean, to be fair, <laughs> Uh, I get that but also some people just they feel a little bit more productive or a little bit honestly like less depressed if they still get ready for their day they still like you know wake up shower do their hair makeup and get dressed it could maybe potentially help with your uh, your self-care routine of taking care of yourself during this really really difficult time and so let's put makeup on just gonna chat with you guys and find my <laughs> expensive stuff and I will list everything down below I didn't even take everything out because I kind of wanted to go through it with you guys so these are expensive so for primer I already put on my skincare my um, the same things that I've been using the last like month or longer than that probably my daytime skincare is the Ren acne serum and then the also like clear calm moisturizer and the biosynth eye cream the one in the jar and so I already have that on and I obviously well maybe not obviously but I just showered and washed my hair for the first time in like a week so for primer I have the gripping primer from cover fx and the tarte timeless smoothing primer I mean I usually don't use two primers but we're being fancy today we're being bougie today we're being expensive today so I'm gonna use both of them. <laughs> I guess I'll put this one all over my face and the tart one like in my T-zone. So my hands are clean, I just washed them. Gripping primer. Honestly, I feel like this was such a big deal. Oh, it feels so like, it's like sticky. It feels like you're putting glue on your face. But I feel like this is a really big deal a few months ago or like six months ago or something that people like loved it. And then I feel like I haven't really heard about it since just because that happens a lot with makeup in terms of like fads. It doesn't mean that people are not using it. It just means that they're not talking about it anymore because all new stuff came out that they're talking about. But I got this because I had really good reviews and I tried it a couple times and I didn't really see like much of a difference, but I kept it anyway, mostly because it was very expensive. So I'm also gonna use this pore filling primer, just taking a little bit, it's kind of like a little putty and essentially just pressing that into my pores primers totally first of all some people just don't even believe in primers which is fine especially if you use a lot of skincare or you haven't noticed a difference totally makes sense but essentially a primer if it works or not is going to depend on the type of primer you buy for your skin so the gripping primer is literally to hold your makeup on longer the pore filling primer is to fill your pores if you have really dry skin like i have pretty dry skin but i just put on my moisturizer so i didn't necessarily think that i needed another hydrating primer but maybe you do and so that's like i have this mineral fusion hydrating primer that i really like and so there's other options depending on what you need for a primer okay so then oh and this i always forget that i have so i never use it but we're gonna use it today being bougie uh, i never say the word bougie <laughs> ever uh, this is the tarte cc under eye corrector so it's like a peach color to correct your under eyes using my finger as well with that and always be gentle under your eyes the skin under your eyes is more delicate than the rest of your face 
So pat as much as you can instead of like heavily rubbing. But we'll use that to neutralize a little bit. And then for foundation, I think this one's my most expensive, but honestly, this one's probably like right next to it. I have the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint, which is essentially like makeup and skincare and SPF all in one. And I've used it several times. It's very, very light coverage, but I like it. And it's like an all natural brand and I really like this. And then I have the Makeup Forever Ultra HD uh, foundation, that word. And this I think is a little bit less expensive, but I haven't even opened this yet. Uh, I had a little trial that I really, really liked and so I bought the full size, but haven't used it. Do you guys wanna guess why? <laughs> Not really been uh, wearing a lot of makeup. But anyway, this Ilia one, I'm using my Sephora brush. This was actually pretty expensive too. I don't remember how much, but this is just a foundation brush. And this Ilia comes in a little dropper, which can be a little messy, but. Okay, so we're just gonna put this all over my face. It is very light coverage, but it's very like dewy. Like it'll cover some redness, but it won't cover like acne or it probably wouldn't even really cover scars but depending on the day and the kind of makeup you want like the other foundation that i really really like and that i use a decent amount is the anastasia one and that one's much more full coverage and so i wanted this because it was lighter coverage but like it still looks like your skin you know i don't know if you can tell again the lighting please just take my word for it it's really nice and this is very expensive. I think this was like $46 or something ridiculous. But again, it's like skincare and SPF 40 in this. So, which, you know, it's very necessary staying in my house all day. <laughs> so concealer, I honestly think that all my concealers are about the same price. Oh no, here we go. The most expensive one is probably either the Ilia one or the Charlotte Tilbury one. So we're going to use both. Oh, and I'll tell you, I have this in the color Formosa. So the Ilia True Skin Serum Concealer. I'm Chicory, which is either the lightest or the second to lightest shade. And then I have the Magic Away Liquid Concealer by Charlotte Tilbury in the color 3 Fair. And this one I generally use on my face because it's very similar to the color of my skin. Then this one's a little bit lighter, so maybe I'll use that under my eyes to brighten under my eyes a little bit. So let's do that. Ilia under my eyes. And then Magic Away, which I'm running out of, but I... <laughs> very hard to open okay i love this concealer honestly it's one of my favorite concealers i've ever used but it's very a hard to open and b it has one of those little like fluffy spongy tops and i a don't like those but b mine like ripped and so i ripped it off so now i can't just like put this on my face like i kind of just like will do this or i mean i will do this but like make sure like to not like scratch myself because now it's just like a weird raw edge thing, but the actual concealer is great and I'm almost out of it, but I have so many others. I just bought the Beauty Blender one. I have the Josie Marin one, so I'm not gonna rebuy this yet, but I do really, really like it and probably will rebuy it at some point. Okay, so I'm just using the Magic Away to kind of cover up some spots that I have. And that's good too, like, if you want to use like a light coverage foundation then you can always go over your dark spots or your acne spots or scars or anything like that with a concealer so you don't have full coverage all over your whole face you can do that such preference whatever you feel comfortable with so that's done now i'm going to go to bronzer and blush i'm going to use the nude sticks these are pretty expensive they don't seem bougie but this was like $32 or something for this bronzer cream stick thing. I'm almost out, but I actually already bought a backup because I really like this. And this lasts for a really, really long time. And the brand is pretty natural as well, but they are quite expensive, but they're really good products. So I'm gonna use this kind of as like contour bronzer. So like that. And then a little on my nose. Beautiful, beautiful. And then I'm going to take this It Cosmetics, also kind of expensive brush, uh, to use this little side to buff it out. And I'm using cream products, which is why I did not put any powder on my face yet, because any cream products you want to put on before you powder. So I'm not pressing too, too hard, just because it will take away a little bit of the color. So if there's any spots that it looks like there is too much color, it'll buff it more. Here, let me put you back a little bit more so you can see my forehead. That might be important, huh? There we go. 
So I need to tell you guys a story <laughs> while I'm buffing this out because it's gonna take a minute. So I was just drying my hair, right? And I have a tiny little hair dryer that I've had for years. It's like, uh, I can't even remember the brand of it, but one of those like Rite Aid brands, it was like $15, a little travel foldable one, but I've been using it for years, love it, does the job and uh, dries my hair pretty quickly. And obviously it's travel friendly for when I'm on the road. And uh, it came with one of those like pointed attachments. Like I forget what they're actually called right now for some reason. But the attachment that's like round on the end to attach the hair dryer and then it goes into like a little rectangle thing at the end. And uh, so I was drying my hair and that attachment has always been like, a, or not always, but recently at least been like a little loose. So sometimes it falls off, sometimes. And it fell off today and bounced on my counter and then jumped in the toilet. <laughs> Cause I didn't close the toilet seat. So it jumped in the toilet. So I threw it out because I don't, pff, not dealing with sanitizing that. So yeah, <laughs> just happened. I thought it was really funny. And I told Instagram, if you guys are not following me on Instagram, please go do that because that's where I'll tell stories like that. And then I might forget by the time I record another YouTube video. So uh, if you want a little bit more of like my daily life, go follow me on Instagram. Cause then I talk to you about <laughs> dropping a hair dryer attachment in the toilet. But I didn't drop it, it like fell like over the sink, which is like three or four feet away from the toilet, but it just kept bouncing <laughs> and then jumped in the toilet. And then I reached in there with my bare hand to get it out, which is gonna gross out so many of you, but I washed my hands for like an hour and a half afterwards, so. <laughs> and it was clean water, but still, it was so, oh my gosh, it was just so funny. It was almost like slow motion in like a, like a sitcom that it happened, just was bouncing. Okay, so. Now that that is all buffed out, I am also going to put on some cream blush. Ilia, again, Ilia is a quite expensive brand, but they are all natural and I really do like their products. I think actually I only have like four of their products, but they're pretty expensive. So this is the Ilia Cream Blush in Tenderly. I also do have a Nude Sticks Cream Blush. Oh, this, by the way, this Nude Sticks thing that I just used is the Nudies All Over Face Color in Bondi Bay. I really like that. But I also have the Sun Kissed one, which is somewhere in between like a bronzer and a blush for me. It's like a very, very warm toned bronzer. And then I have Bareback, which is more of a blush. But I'm gonna use this Ilia one. So I'm just gonna swipe that. I went on like a cream blush binge like a month ago or something and I bought a bunch <laughs> and just blush in general but I bought this one and the rest were from Target. I got this one that I use all the time. I really really like this one, the Pixie on the Glow blush in I oh, Fleur. That looks like a deodorant, but I love this color. Oh no, close. Uh but I really like this one and I also got the Milani Cheek Kiss liquid blush in Pink Fleur. I don't think I've used that one yet. Um and then I also got this Physicians Formula one as well that I just got like in the mood for buying blushes because I, if you guys watched my makeup declutter kind of makeup collection video, you would notice that I had like one blush. And since it's about to be spring or it is spring, I wanted to have some blush so I could like, you know, my face could look a little brighter. While I'm stuck inside only. So I just bought a couple, but mostly from Target, but this was like the one like high end one that I bought. But, and PS, this is not me saying that you need to have all expensive products. Again, I have so much of a mishmash, is mishmash the term? My collection has $6 things and $50 things. And so you can obviously feel beautiful and have really good products that are much more inexpensive. But this video, I just wanted to play with all my really expensive stuff. Okay, now let's do, should we just do liquid highlight? Just all like, all liquid cream products. I have one, I don't know if this counts because it's a little trial size, but this is the Cover FX liquid highlight, but I don't think I paid anything for this. <laughs> but I think like actually buying it is a little expensive. And then I'll put an expensive powder one over that. How's that? So I'm just gonna use a little Real Techniques brush. And this is in a little dropper as well. I'm not putting a lot because wow, this is very pigmented. Beautiful and pigmented. This is in the color Moonlight. So I'm gonna go like, Boop, 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 and then boop, 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 and then boop, and I guess right here too. And then, can you guys see? Yeah, can you see any of this video? I'm not a makeup YouTuber. 
Do you guys ever like imagine what it would be like if you forgot to blend something in? <laughs> like what if I just had that highlighter right on my upper lip and I'd never blended it in? <laughs> I mean, obviously like most of the time no one's gonna see you, but like what if someone sees you? What if like I FaceTime my dad later and he just saw me having like a shiny little mustache? <laughs> okay, so that's the highlighter. And then let's put on, what's my most expensive highlighter in here? I don't really, maybe this, one. I think they're all kind of about mid-range. I don't have any like crazy high-end because you guys know what Sephora. There's like the high-end like Too Faced and Anastasia and Tarte and all those brands and then there's like the higher end like Tom Ford and I would even say Ilia is a little bit more towards that in terms of pricing. Um, Charlotte Tilbury is a little bit more towards that in terms of pricing and so I don't have a blush that is on that high high end but I have some that are Still high end. This is Anastasia and Amrezy. I love this highlight. This is so pretty. So let's put a little bit of that on top to be super glowy so that people can see me even when I'm not leaving my house. Just look through my window like, oh my goodness. Why is it so shiny in there? Highlight. All right, so now I'm just gonna powder under my eyes, this part of my forehead and like my chin. And I'm gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish. Why was that so hard for me to say? Airbrush Flawless Finish in the color One Fair, and it's their Skin Perfecting Micro Powder. Ish powder. It's powder. And it's nice. I don't know if I'd rebuy it, but it is nice, and I own it, and I'm using it, and I've already, I clearly I already hit pan, so like I use it a lot. But one of my new favorite powders is the Elf. It's like eight bucks at Target. The Elf Halo Glow Setting Powder. I really like that, but. It's only $8 and that's not the point of this video. <laughs> if you guys want me to, cause I obviously, I know that some people don't like makeup videos, which is totally fine. I, I get that. Um, and that might not be why you're watching my channel. That's totally, totally fine. But my channel, obviously my content has had to change a little bit because I was about to get back on the road and I obviously cannot do that at this time. And so my content's changing a little bit. I am trying to figure it out to still give you guys content that you wanna watch. I really, really am. But with anyone's channel, there's always gonna be some videos that maybe you don't like or some videos that you're not really interested in or anything, but I still wanna do videos, hopefully that still interest you and uh, keep you entertained. And so if you do like the makeup videos, especially while I'm just stuck inside maybe I can do this video but like the drugstore version like use all my least expensive products maybe I can do that video in a couple weeks let me know in the comments if you'd want to see that and then we can talk about all like the drugstore stuff that I have so okay after that let's do eyebrows eyebrows oh I was gonna say that would be tricky but it's definitely not because I thought this was a mildly regrettable purchase <laughs> but I bought it and I have it so I'm gonna use it I'll show you that in one second but I do have do I even have an eyebrow pencil that is from Sephora? Oh crap, I might not. Uh-oh. Oh crap, I might not. <laughs> I think my only eyebrow pencil is e.l.f. Uh-oh. Well, does that mean that I, yeah, no, I'm challenging myself now, so I guess that means I'm just using this really expensive eyebrow gel. And I don't even think it's very pigmented, so maybe I'll do a little mixture because I have a couple. So, ah, okay, maybe I'll start with this Anastasia. This is the Medium Brow Dip Brow Gel. So this is kind of like their Dip Brow Pomade, but I guess a little bit more diluted and mixed with gel. But the product that I was talking about that was mildly regrettable is this Hourglass. I don't own Hourglass. Oh wait, I do. I forgot, I can put on this too. Okay, I'll get to that in a second, sorry. <laughs> but this is their Brow Volumizing Fiber Gel. I have mine in the color Soft Brunette. And this doesn't really do much. <laughs> I don't remember how much this was. I'm gonna list everything in my description with the prices too. This just, I wanted, I. <sighs> I really like eyebrow products. I think for me, having a good eyebrow product in my eyebrows is very important for like my face. Like for me personally, if I can only wear like a couple things, eyebrow gel and like concealer are my two top ones. And so my favorite thing right now is the Glossier Boy Brow. This is like 16 bucks, which is very like in between. And for an eyebrow pencil, I use the e.l.f. one, which is like six bucks or something. But I just wanted to try something else because I like trying makeup. I think it's fun and I bought this I don't know, a month or two ago, and it doesn't really do much for me. It had great reviews, but it's a little bit like less of a hold, I guess, and it's not that much color. So I'm gonna put the Anastasia one on first, just a little bit, because this uh, does have a decent amount of color. And this one, this is not crazy expensive, but it was still like $18 or $20 or something. But again, if we're talking about bougie, 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 Anastasia is not super bougie, but 
I don't have everything in every category, especially eyebrow products because I found that e.l.f. one and they're $6. Uh, I used to use Anastasia, their brow was for a while, and I think I used the Benefit once or twice, but honestly, the e.l.f. one to me, especially if you can find a color that works, is on par with those. Okay, I put that on just to add a little bit of color, and now we're gonna use this Hourglass one. <laughs> I just feel like it doesn't really do much. Like it doesn't feel like there's a lot of hold or a lot of color. So I don't know. I don't know, but it had great reviews. So if you actually, if you use this, please let me know in the comments, like if it really does anything for your brows. Cause I really like like fluffy, like big brows. And this, I mean, I think they look fine. Okay, so, oh, now I forgot that I had this little hourglass. Obviously this is a little trial size. So this was like 20 bucks just for even the trial size. But the full size of this is, uh, in the 40s or 50s or something. This is their ambient lighting powder in dim light. I'm just gonna add maybe right here. Okay, we're almost done. I guess just some eye stuff. Let's put let's put eyeshadow on today. I don't even know the last time I put eyeshadow on, honestly. It's probably been decades. Oh, and I lied, I do have one other hourglass product. That's another sample size. A lot of these expensive brands, if they have a smaller, not sample, but if they have the smaller sizes, I will get those. And then if I love it, I might buy the bigger one if I'm gonna use it all the time. But like this powder, this would take me like a year to get through anyway. So like, I don't need the bigger one. And then when it comes to mascara, cause I have an hourglass mascara as well. I think I've talked about this. Mascaras, you're supposed to get a new one every three months. And sometimes these smaller sizes will last you three months, especially if you're someone who uses two different mascaras or if you don't wear a mascara every day, one of these smaller sizes that are half the price and a little bit less than half the product, they could still last you like three months. And so I'm someone who I like to have two or three mascaras around. And so I get these little travel sizes. This was like $12, which is equivalent to a L'Oreal or Maybelline mascara almost. I know there's a little bit cheaper, but almost but this still lasts me for the three months. Like I don't need to rebuy it any quicker because A, I don't wear mascara every day and then B also, I have like two or three mascaras open. So just a little tidbit for mascaras. I don't have any expensive eyeshadow palettes because I don't really wear eyeshadow a lot. So <laughs> do I have any expensive? Oh, I so lied. This was not crazy expensive because it's such a small palette, but Natasha Denona is very expensive. Her eyeshadow palettes, some of them are like $125, which is, insane but her eyeshadows are really good and depending if you like them or not spend your money on whatever you want you know but this one's only five eyeshadows i think this was 25 dollars. but i'm gonna use that because that's the definitely the bougiest thing i have oh i also have a charlotte tilbury i actually think i have two of these i really like these these like chubby sticks but i don't think these colors will go with the natasha denona but maybe they will we'll see and i don't really know a lot about eyeshadow so i probably won't talk much through this and i'll probably just speed it up but i'm using some mostly like morphe brushes wow i have not put on eyeshadow in so long this is gonna be so weird but let's see what happens so i have again the natasha denona this is the mini gold palette and this is so pretty come on again i really hope the lighting's okay but that is so pretty and then I have two of these Charlotte Tilbury color chameleons. I have dark pearl, which is like a purpley gray. And I have black diamonds, which is a sparkly black. They're so pretty. And I really, really like these a lot. So close to my face. Wow. Wow. So creepy. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to add more of that army green. I don't, I'm just on my eyes. <laughs> Wow, that's a very pretty color. I love green eyeshadows. Okay, I'm just kind of using that a little bit in the crease and then just on like the outer half of the lid, essentially. Could use a packing brush for this. I'm just using the same exact brush that I used for the crease color, which is a Morphe Jaclyn Hill JH33. Okay, I think I'm gonna skip those cream ones because I think I'm just gonna use, which color should I use? I just wanna use one of these shimmers on my lid and then I'll probably take a smaller brush and buff that green one underneath my eye. But I'm thinking the gold. Yeah, we're gonna use the gold with my finger. That is fancy. Uh, that's fancy, I wanna like go to a ball right now. That's, that's fancy. Okay, I'm gonna take a little, 
Morphe M124, one of these little brushes, which is definitely not a lower lash line brush, but I don't care. And I'm gonna um, just put this like right here. I think some got in my eye, that's okay. That is, I don't know if you guys can tell. Slash, I don't even know if the eye look goes with the rest of my makeup. <laughs> but I don't care, I feel fancy. Okay, and then I need some kind of eyeliner for my waterline. You know what I wanna try, cause this is so weird to me. This I got in a BoxyCharm. And this is the Lash Liner Inner Liquid Eyeliner by Kat Von D in Trooper Black, which is so like an inner liquid eyeliner. And that seems terrifying, but very cool. And I wanted to try it. It's on this weird little felt tippy thing. This is weird and I'm nervous, but. Oh, nope, too scary, way too scary, way too scary. <laughs> Wow, what the heck? First of all, that is very liquidy. Nope, no, nope, absolutely not. No, thank you, no. Whoa, that is weird. That was like, it was too liquidy that like it felt like it was gonna get in my eye. Okay, well, let's fix that real quick. Okay, I'm just gonna use a regular black eyeliner. I just have this Tarte one, easy on the eyes, Tarte black clay liner. I don't think I love this. Oh, I'm, uh, mm, I'm not using this. This is giving me flashbacks. I need to back you guys up because I need to tell you a story really quick. If you guys have been watching me for a long time, you may remember this story, you may have heard this story, but this just reminded me of it. Uh, this eyeliner that's all like rigidy. Uh, the very, very short version of the story is that I was doing my makeup once like three years ago, I think, and I told this story in a video like after it happened, but I was doing my makeup and I went to put eyeliner on my waterline, just like I just did with that one. And I went to go put on my waterline and I did not look at the eyeliner first because I just opened it and started to put it on. And I didn't realize that, and again, I don't know if you can tell on this, but there's little pieces of the actual pencil part that are like raw and like spiky. Like it needs to be sharpened essentially. Like if you know what a pencil looks like when it needs to be sharpened and part of like the wood part's kind of like up and like jagged, it looked like that and then I went to put the eyeliner on and there wasn't even actual eyeliner there because I guess it broke off and it was just the jagged pieces of pencil and then I uh, stabbed myself in the eye and I like did this, stabbing myself in the eye. So it was like a stab scratch and it hurt, wow, so bad. And the next morning I went to the eye doctor and he's like, well, it's not a surface level scratch but it's not the deepest scratch I've ever seen. He's like, you've scratched several layers of your eye. And I'm like, cool. <laughs> and so it was in that in-between type of serious that he's like, you can wear an eye patch if you want. He's like, but really put these gel eye drops in your eye a couple times a day or whatever for the next like two weeks and you'll be fine. And so I didn't wear an eye patch. I just did that for the next couple weeks, didn't wear makeup, just put the gel eye drops in and I ended up being totally fine. But this reminded me of it <laughs> because I saw little jagged edges and I'm like, absolutely not. No thank you, because wow, that is painful. Scratching your eye, ooh, do not recommend that. Don't, don't recommend, please don't scratch your eye. If you can help it, don't do it. I mean, I can obviously just sharpen this, but I'm scared of it now. <sighs> All right, um, well, I'm gonna look for one more minute, because the only other eyeliners I have are like Maybelline. <laughs> and I have a dose of colors one, but that doesn't really work very well, and it's brown. Dang it, Katie. Come on. Those of colors might be the most expensive one though. It's brown and doesn't work very well, but that's what we're gonna use. Okay. I forgot to zoom you back in. Sorry. Zoom, 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 zoom. Okay, now I'm just gonna curl my eyelashes with my Tweezer Man, Tweezer Min eyelash filler for round eyes. And then I'm going to use my Hourglass Caution Mascara in Ultra Black. Again, I just have the smaller size, but uh, this is an expensive brand and I love this mascara. And again, if you get this size, it's only like 12 or $13, which is not crazy to spend for mascara. And this does last me a decent amount of time. So sometimes I almost think that full size mascaras are like a little bit of a scam almost, <laughs> unless you use a lot every day and you'll only use one. But anyway, okay. 
And I generally curl one, then put mascara on, then curl the other, put mascara on, which might be taboo. Some of you guys might be like, do you also put a sock on, then a shoe, then a sock, then a shoe, which I don't. But I find that put, and this could be totally wrong of me, <laughs> but I find that if I curl it and then immediately put on the mascara, it's a little bit more likely for the mascara to hold the curl. Is that science? I don't know. I have no idea, but that's what I do. And uh, usually, honestly, if I had this much eye makeup on, I would put false eyelashes on, but I don't wanna do that. And all my false eyelashes are like Ardell and they're like $4, so it does not count. Aw oh, man, it stopped recording, but I don't know when. Was it when I was on my rant about mascara again? Cause I went on another one. I think I went on one earlier too. I don't remember, but anyway. Oh, I think I was saying that I'm almost out of this. I probably need to get a new one or not a new one, but I need to open up a new mascara because I already have other mascaras that aren't opened um, because this one's basically dried out. And I think I have had this one for about three months. But then also I was gonna say, if you've never curled your eyelashes ever, doesn't watching someone do it, isn't that terrifying? <laughs> like it looks like a torture device almost, curling your eyelashes. Okay, I actually am going to put on another coat of a different mascara. That is expensive, don't worry, but just because this one is so dry that like I can't really get a lot on my lashes. Um, but I think it's in my purse. Where's my purse? Should I put my glasses on? Oh, it's right here, <laughs> it's right in front of me. So I also have the Lancome uh, Monsieur Big, a little trial size, sample size, tiny little travel size of this as well. And this is my other favorite high-end mascara. I love this, love, love, love. And this one is definitely not as dried out. So. We're gonna double up. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Last things last. Um, honestly, I might put on a little uh, powder bronzer if I have an expensive one, which I'm not sure I actually do. <laughs> but I feel like I just want more color on my face. Yeah, I don't have like a crazy expensive bronzer. Oh, okay, no, let's use this. I have this Becca Afterglow Sunset I opened it that carefully. Oh, you couldn't see, but I opened it very slowly because one of them is broken. Um, oh, I'm gonna zoom you back out because no one needs to be this close to my face. <laughs> but this palette has two highlighters, two blushes, and a little bronzer. And Becca's just an expensive brand. I definitely did not pay a lot for this because I'm almost positive that this is from TJ Maxx. But this video is not about what I paid a lot for, it's about what's expensive. <laughs> But sometimes, seriously, you can go to TJ Maxx and find really good deals. Just make sure that, you know, like the product's not used. And even if it is, it's something that you can disinfect at home. But anyway, I'm just gonna put like a little bit more color on. Do I need it? No. Do I want it? Yeah, you bet your boots I do. Okay. Maybe a little more blush too. So I just took that middle bronzer color. I can't cover this whole mirror. I don't want to blind you guys. Sorry. I took that middle bronzer one and I'm just going to kind of probably just use both of these like a very quick because I don't want to have too much blush on um, because I have so much eye makeup on and I feel like that's where it gets a little like you're going to look like a clown if you have a lot of blush and a lot of eye makeup. Oh, too late. Put way too much blush on. <laughs> Crap. That's when you take a powder brush and you just dip it into powder and you go over it. I just dipped this into this Smashbox Cali contour thing because that's what I was using for my mirror. And this is expensive too, so it's not crazy bougie, but it's kind of expensive because it's like a huge palette. So, okay, now lips. Okay, I'm going to use a Patrick Ta lip liner. These are really, really nice. This one is She's Proud. Is this one I wanna use? I have two of them. I have She's Proud and something else. These are bougie city. I think these are like $26 for a lip liner, but I, oh, here's the other color I have. She's humble. Which one's lighter? I forget. Oh, she's humble. It's lighter. I especially don't mind paying more for lip products when they say that they're gluten-free because I have a gluten allergy and for some makeup, I don't care if it's gluten or not, but for anything that could get in my mouth, i.e. Uh, if I put concealer on my mouth, that I make sure is gluten-free, and then any lip products. So these said they were gluten-free, and I've not had an issue with them. And so since they are a little bit more expensive, I'm willing to pay that. I'm willing to pay that price. Again, again, let's not judge people for how they spend their money. Okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
but I'm going to overdraw my lips the teeniest bit, teeniest bit. And this is a nice nude pink color. And I lined them and also filled them in. Oh, and I already had my Jouer Lip Enhancer on, which is one of my favorite chapsticks. It's like a liquidy chapstick, like a Carmex or whatever, but this is expensive as well. Uh, but I already had that on. So put that lip liner on and then what expensive lip products do I have? I have a Patrick Ta um, like lipstick thing. So maybe I'll put that on too. Where are you? Aha. I have this in She's Unapologetic, which is a very like light pink. And this is a lip cream. So it's essentially a melted down lipstick that stays creamy. So it's not a liquid lipstick, it does not dry, uh, and it's not a gloss. It is literally a lip cream. Okay. So this is the final look. Do we need a setting spray to make it last all day? <laughs> uh, do I even have a setting spray? Oh yes, I have the Cover FX. Again, a mini one. <laughs> Cover FX Dewy Finish Setting Spray. I usually don't like to put on setting spray after I put on mascara because it, it like get wet and weird, but whatever. Okay, there we go. My makeup is all done. And my eyelashes did not get wet, that's good. Um, okay, so here's the finished product of using a ton of my expensive makeup. Um, I'm gonna put my glasses on so I can see you guys. <laughs> yeah, so this is my makeup. I like it. I think it came out really nice. So again, obviously you do not need expensive products, expensive makeup to feel beautiful or look beautiful, but I really like makeup and so I have several really expensive products uh, and so I wanted to use them today. And uh, I feel pretty. I like this makeup look. I really like that eyeshadow. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed hanging out with me while I went through some of my fancy, fancy makeup. Um, and also, again, let me know if you want me to do basically the same video, but with all my least expensive makeup. So I have some like Wet n Wild and some Elf and like brands like that. Let me know in the comments if you want to see that as well, because I am so happy to do that. And I guess that's going to be it. Thanks again for watching. Make sure that you're subscribed and following me on Instagram as well. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful day. I love you. Jesus loves you. And I'll talk Talk to you later. Bye.